Hello, friends. So yesterday, uh, the uh, playtest uh, packet for D&D 1 uh, released uh, for open playtest among the community. Um, if you are not in the know, uh, in 2024, a new rule set for uh, D&D will drop. Supposedly, they're not going to have new additions going forward, that it's all going to be one rule set. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, game companies have a bottom line and they need to be able to pay their employees and that means steady income and I don't know if that means that they're going to go back on that or if there's going to be like continuous updates with rule sets and they'll be selling pieces of rule sets as time goes on or if it's going to be on a subscription model I don't know uh, we will see but when I'll again I'll believe it when I see it uh, there are, uh, in this packet, uh, they have uh, race and uh, background updates. Um, I would, I'm going to go over those and give you just my initial first impressions of each one. And uh, just some things that stuck out at me. And uh, we're going to uh, be going from there. Um, and we'll see in playtest how these actually play out. Uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, the, it is most helpful to also look at the interview with Jeremy Crawford on the D&D uh, &D One rule set. I'm going to give you a link down in the description. Yeah, go go look down. Okay, and uh, we'll see what uh, kind of what what they were going for for each of these changes. So the first thing that they are doing as far as uh, changes is that they're actually going to be divorcing uh, ability score increases from race or heritage or species, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you're not going to get a solid stat bump from that, nor are you going to be doing the whole Tasha's uh, flexible stat increase from race. Um, that does have some interesting effects with some of them, um, and we'll go over those in a moment. Um, as a good side note, and this was kind of long overdue, they had an aside on, on mixed lineage, where all of your halves, you know, half elves, half orcs, etc., uh, as well as others, they are now doing as you pick the game stats uh, from. Uh, one or the other. Oh, hi, Katie. Uh, so that's actually something that we've been doing for quite a while now. I, I do have a character who has a daughter. Uh, the My character is uh, High Elven, but the, the daughter is a High Elven Wood Elven mix. And so we actually have stats for her as a Wood Elf, and it works just fine. You know, nobody knows. She just has you know, cosmetic features of, of both. Uh, and that makes just things so much easier. And it, it also saves a lot of space in, in the player's handbook too, that we could be using for other things that I'll be going over. Um, so the first thing we're gonna start with is humans. So if we're divorcing ability score increases from race or species or whatever you wanna call it, uh, then you can't have a plus one stat increase across the board. What they are getting is they're getting feats just like variant humans, and they're also getting inspiration just right off the bat every morning. So I, 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 I like that and I don't. Um, we're gonna be going over that a little bit later on in the video when we're talking about inspiration. I know what they're going for here, but I have a, some concerns, uh, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, as far as something else, I'm, I'm sure most of you would, would say, okay, I know that you looked at elves with a fine tooth comb, and there were some good things uh, about elves that, that I saw. I'm glad that they uh, finally took out the automatic proficiencies. Uh, I think that with, uh, ta um, I'm sorry, Monsters of the Multiverse, that the races in, or the, the uh, elf sub-races in there, um, like Eladrin, Shatterkai, 
CLs. Uh, not having the proficiencies and then getting them off of the trance was very flavorful and I wanted to see them in with the rest of the elves. So it's consistent across the board, right? Um, uh, maybe not drow because they, they don't trance in the same way that the other elves do. They don't, they don't get connected to the rest of the celery. But we could have retconned it and just made it consistent. Uh, that's something that I, I would have loved seeing. Uh, instead, they, they have the normal, okay, you just rest for four hours. Now they have uh, spells that they have um, at first, third, and fifth uh, to represent that they're magically connected. And while I, I like that for the whole magical connection aspect, uh, I... I'm not sure on someone like Hiles now gain Misty Step at fifth level. And I think that that actually steps on the toes of the Lavern and Shadow Kai a little bit. But um, it's, I think that it's, it's a, somewhat of a step in the right direction as far as uh, getting rid of the automatic proficiencies go. As far as orcs go, uh, orcs actually get a promotion to the uh, to the player's handbook. This is long since overdue, and also gives a solution for half orcs. Now we can just use orcs for half orc stats, and it's fine. Uh, and orcs have been long wanted to be played by players anyway, so I, I think that this is a, an appropriate and overdue move. Uh, as and tieflings also now have uh, Abyssal Heritage, and uh, they can also have, um, they, can, they can also be descended from Ugoloths, uh, which is a good thing. That's actually something that um, I was wanting for a while, because not all of us want to have Infernal Descended Tieflings. I, I think that they should be a lot more unique. So now they have um, sub-races, for tieflings, de depending on what their heritage is. Again, long since overdue. Uh, there is a small disappointment. Okay, it's a large one. And, and I, I'm not sure why Tabaxi didn't get a promotion. We absolutely love Tabaxi. Um, and I, I think that it's it's time that, that they get a promotion because honestly, cat people just uh, so much there's so much love for them, and I, I see them at gaming tables all the time. So I, I think it's it's honestly time that we get them into the player's handbook. Now, they did have the heavenly counterpart to Tieflings, but you would think that that would be ASMR. But no, they actually created something called Ardlings which are ASMR, except that they're animal-headed. Now, I'm not sure really why we needed this. My thought is, why not just take ASMR and update them, and you can reskin them to have animal heads. I'm not sure what, why we really needed something else to do what Eladrin were. I'm not sorry, what, what ASMR we're already doing. So, a little confused on, on, on that one. Even after the explanation, it was, it was just a little weird why, why we needed both. Um, even if they're uh, exalted descended, you know, uh, from Arborea, for example, it, to me it, it didn't really matter. You know, a celestial is a celestial. So just just like you know, fiend is a fiend. So I really, I I, I didn't really see uh, the use for that. Um, moving on to backgrounds. So one of the large differences is, is they're actually going to be flipping, so that instead of having static backgrounds that you choose from, now the default is that you actually create your own background and that you have a a la carte formula for what is in your background. In a way, I kind of like this. Uh, that's 
making the customizing your background a little bit uh, more to the forefront. So you can have that character that when you create your backstory for them, um, you can have something that fits a little bit better. Uh, you can have that character what, that, let's say, isn't quite an urchin, but not quite a commoner either, for example. Um, you could have a, a sage, but not really growing up cloistered in a library. You know, you could have a character that's an apprentice, for an ex example, where something didn't quite fit, and, and I like that. Uh, now they're putting the stat bumps onto background. I think that's, that's actually a step in the right direction. Uh, that way you can actually have stat bumps that are appropriate to what you're actually doing, what you're actually talented in, what, what you're actually learning. Uh, that, that actually makes a little bit more sense. Um, and then you get a, a feat on that, and that's that's actually pretty powerful. Um, I, I like it with a few exceptions. Well, one major exception, and we'll get to that later. Um, and, but it actually puts a little bit more teeth uh, behind background, and, and I like that rather than, okay, well, you get a, like a background contact. Uh, you also still get your equipment package with backgrounds, and they're actually balancing the equipment packages. Now, I like the balance. I, I really do, because, uh, you know, nobles had all the money, and they were, like, uh, hermit um, gave you basically a couple coppers. You know, if the... Uh, the amount of discrepancy, it was, it was wild. So I'm glad that they're making the packages a little bit more constant. On the other hand, it's a little bit more disappointing that we're not going to be getting those cute little useless items that make sense for your background that you might have to find creative uses for later that were evocative. Uh, now... We're going to go on to some rules updates as well that they had in, in the packet, and we come to inspiration. Now, uh, the, uh, the design team apparently wanted inspiration to be used a lot more often, and we're finding that players were hoarding inspiration to the point where they were forgetting they had it. I've never had this problem on my table. We, we use inspiration at the drop of a hat, but we also regain it very fast. Uh, so one of the things that they're doing is they're having inspiration be regained on the roll of a natural 20, uh, in addition to humans uh, gaining uh, inspiration at the start of, uh, after a long rest. So I think that this may be a little bit of overkill, and 20s, I think, should be more their own reward. It's already exciting to roll a nat 20. So I'm. it was suggested somewhere online that we should be awarding this on a nat 1 instead because it's painful to roll that nat 1. It's disappointing. So being able to give a little bit of something back uh, to where it's a okay, you you had a setback, but you're going to you're going to regroup. You're you're going to be able to um, remember that loved one and and come back greater than before. Uh, I think that that would be a lot more evocative, and and would produce much more fun gameplay. Now, I am a little bit concerned that if we are basically giving out inspiration like candy that we're going to have a situation where we're going to have advantage on the majority of our roles. I'm not sure I like that. Uh, and that also brings me to the next part, is that um, one of the examples that they gave for uh, first level feet for a background was Lucky. And I've already banned Lucky at my tables, because uh, I'm under the opinion of how... or 
I ask the question of how many roles do we actually do as a singular person during a, a singular session? And the answer that I come up with is not as many as you think, because most of the die rolls around the table are, uh, are done by other players. There's a, a limited amount of time. So your individual roles, the ones that count, those are the ones that you're going to be spending the inspiration. Those are the ones that you're going to be spending luck points on. And I think that that takes away a lot of the risk factor. So it makes me very uncomfortable. Um, on the other hand, we also had uh, a situation where um, finally the, the rules are catching up to what we were already doing anyway. And that's uh, automatic successes on nat 20s for skill checks and saving throws and automatic failures on ones. We were all already doing this. Come on. I, I don't know any table that wasn't using this. Especially because uh, rolling a natural 20 or natural 1 are dramatic. So DMs want to keep this drama in their games, that, that level of excitement, the, the importance of their roles. So having that actually be codified as raw, much, much better of a step in the right direction. But those are my first impressions. Um, we'll actually see during playtesting how accurate they are. I have definitely been wrong before. I welcome being wrong again. So um, let me know down in the comments what, what you think and uh, what you have found during playtest and, and see what actually surprised you. Um, so until next time, I'll, I'll see everyone later.